Well, on four, it's time to join John Frankham and the team on the morning line. It might be April Fool's Day, but there's absolutely no chance of catching out our guest this morning. It took me three telephone calls and a fax from the head of Channel 4 Racing to convince him we actually wanted him on the programme this morning. He's a jockey who's as stylish in the saddle as anybody. He's been going for 16 years, won the Gold Cup 12 years ago on Brigorn. And uh, there he is on Soundry Valley, big winner at Cheltenham just the other day. Graham Bradley. Still going strong. Going better than ever. Dead right. Having your best year, aren't you? 40 winners? Um, yeah, best year for a long time. My best is actually 53, but I'm um, hoping to beat that touch wood. But last year you rode a stack of winners over in Ireland, didn't you? I did in all. I rode 53 winners last year, um, only 37 at home. But I had 13 in Ireland and three, and three or four in France. And we've been hearing just recently about uh, Richard Dunwoody on about uh, maybe thinking of retiring. No chance of you retiring. Dead right, I'm only just getting going Still again. Still going strong, <laughs> not too many miles on the clock. Dead right, I mean, I've only had 300 rides every year. I mean, Richard and Maguire and people like that are having 1,000 uh, rides a year. Do you think it just does burn them out at the end of the day? Do you think that's what a lot of the problem is? I would have said so, because there's a lot of mental pressure in riding horses as well as physical pressure. And Richard has to diet a lot and he has to sweat a lot and travel a lot. Um, it must get on top of him a bit. He did say a little while ago he was going to put his weight up, but uh, he hasn't really done that too much. He tried for a little while, but then I don't know whether he got pressure from certain quarters, but I noticed that he did 10 stone at Celta <laughs> Field. Then. I think he's just too competitive. Well, apart from uh, Graham, it could be all Fool's Day rather than April Fool's Day, because we've got uh, <laughs> Alistair down and Jim McGraw with us. And Alistair, you had a little bit of a uh, prank in the weekend, I see in your article. Well, I wrote a piece about Celtic Swing being gelded and training for next year's Triumph. It's a great big unfurnished <laughs> thing, why not? And running these horses in the derby mucks them up. Look at Sea Pigeon. <laughs> Took seven years to win a champion hurdle and recover from running in the derby. And Jim McGrath, you're having a good run. The old gambling's going well the last couple of weeks, I hear. What's Don't the winner today? Don't ask for a loan, Frank. Don't ask for a loan. That's the panel, and of course, the man uh, who's with us every day, no matter whether it's April Fool's Day or not, John McCrick. I can't stand these April. <laughs> um, the suspense is tremendous for those who don't know the result. If you know the result, it takes away so much of the pleasure of watching it. Is this the first time you've attempted a thing like this? Yes, it is, because it's the first time that something's been as important as this. Um, you've had other fights, but it's very hard, as you, uh, as you can imagine, not to know the result of anything that the whole world does know. So one only does it if it's an exceptional occasion, as I believe this is. But somebody could ruin this for you simply by ringing you up of at course. home. Well, what I have done, I'm not answering the phone. I've got my wife to take all calls. <laughs> I refuse to speak to anybody. So I'm hoping by that means that uh, I, I'll be kept in the dark. Uh, <laughs> that was fabulous. You look like you just come from Woodstock, man. Yeah, right. They threw him out. <laughs> well, it was one of the Tyson, not the Tyson, but it was one of the uh, Muhammad Ali fights. I didn't want to know the result before. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't afford to go to the cinema to see it and all that. And the, the booby wasn't too wonderful. And things haven't changed at all. You've put a centre out <laughs> told her what to do. <laughs> she hasn't learned. Oh, she's actually uh, learned. And it was an April Fool, but I hate these apps. These, these are bald, but apparently they're saying it's 25, 25 years ago. Years I don't know. Ago. I haven't aged you, at all. You've, have no, I? you've hardly changed. Seriously, but, I haven't. Yeah. No, Only the, boob the, yeah. the boobies age, her body's sagging now, but apart from that. <laughs> How has he not been thrown on a bonfire in the last 25 years? <laughs> <laughs> I was a handsome devil, Greg. Weren't you? Yeah. You're a yes. You, you, you must have had a glamour all over you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, there you are. You can it see what the. Alan Wicker's hippie brother. And you had your mum's glasses on, that was a nice touch. <laughs> Let's go and get on with it here. Um, I think a very nice touch of the bookmakers. Some independent bookmakers are so worried about the totes place spot are introducing their own bet today, the place. Can you appeal against con 